Assisted Dying, End of Life, Bailiwick of Guernsey, 2018 Anyone who knows me will hopefully know too that I'm a practising Christian. I am therefore declaring my baggage up front. However, were I to take my God or any deity out of the equation completely, would I arrive at the same conclusion? Hmm, let's see. Assisted Dying This is a metaphor a use of semantics to make palatable the physical taking of life via an overdose of medication. There is a great number of arguments for one view or the other. If there is even such a thing as side in this argument, it will be imbued and seeping with rhetoric, emotion and yes for some, religious fervour. In reality there is no right or wrong answer in this. For to tell someone who is terminally ill they are wrong for wanting to end their life goes completely against all the principles by which so many of us espouse daily. Freedom of choice is a very strong principle and one to which I subscribe. So assisted dying in the campaign launch recently talks about the C word, choice. The current campaigners made it clear in public forum that this is, and yes, paraphrasing here, but not for dramatic effect, not about anyone else, and that no one else matters. No one else has the say whether or not a person may or may not wish to die. In a slight digression, this writer remembers having a conversation with an elder person in their youth about depression. The adult said that depression was little more than selfishness and suicide was the same, as it gave no care, no thought, to the person or persons and wider circles affected by such actions. It is important here to make clear that this writer did not then and does not now agree with that analogy. However, were this simply about the individual then, once they arrive at diagnosis or even well in advance of this, they could be stockpiling meds that would very swiftly end their life and mean they would not have to go through treatments which often cause more harm than good. It would also give the person that degree of choice and control over the situation they seek, without the input of anyone else. So here is but one example of assisted dying. One can assist oneself. What does that mean in reality? Clearly it means that no one else is culpable, and even the loosest terms of aiding or abetting suicide, or indeed the taking of another's life. The taking of life aka assisting a person to die by a lethal dose of meds. This word will be used only once here, as it too is imbued with so many varied connotations and it would ruin any rational argument against assisted dying. Murder. There it is. The taking of life by one's own hand, whether violently or making life extinct, even with the agreement of the other person. To possibly a greater number, that is exactly what such an act is. Called mercy killing by some, but the termination of life by one's own hand, and being party to watching that person become life extinct because of one's actions, regardless if agreed upon in advance, regardless of how the concoction is made up, and regardless of how it is actually administered, the life of the dying person would be taken at the hand of another. The general consensus is it would be a given that a doctor would be the only one permitted. This goes against the fundamental principles of culture and society that 99% of us sign up to currently. We end at public and state hanging and death penalties for even the most heinous of crimes decades ago. Yet, here we have citizens advocating actively and campaigning for the taking of life by the hand of another. This same hand could be bringing new life into the world the very same day as administering a lethal dose to end a person suffering from a dreadful disease. It is accepted and heard also that we could have abortion by the same pair of hands, so the writer is not wishing to be dismissive of that either. The Sanctity of Life Is there indeed a sanctity of life anymore? What? If any value do we place on the life of another or any human being? This is as much about the quality of life as it is anything else. 
There is great use of the words right and equality in the argument for assisted dying. However, we make great strides towards saving people from suicide, male suicide being four times higher than that of female. These latter two terms are used in the biological sense. It is a real dichotomy where this works in the likes of Belgium. On the one hand, Belgian society tries to help people who are suicidal. So where is the same logic, the same equality, when applied to folks who are seriously ill through being born impaired, by accident, disease or mental health issues? How many of us have seen posts on so-called social media where quite literally loads of people are filming devastating events, where once we would have all hands on deck helping? How many videos are there circulating showing the bludgeoning of animals and human beings and people laughing openly and sharing the pride of their work live streaming the events? The point here is parts of world society are shifting and diluting the value of life. Dignity and suffering. Watching anyone suffer in the throes of severe disease, physical or other, is one of the most difficult things any of us will ever face in our lifetime. Where is the dignity of having to be in agony day and night, with little or no respite from searing pain, loss of bodily functions, and palliative care that is simply no longer able to begin to address the intolerable thresholds of pain, and yes, suffering, as one approaches end of life because of disease or trauma? Again, there is great use of the word choice in the assisted dying argument. Choice can never impact or affect only the individual. It will affect everyone involved with the person. Where is the choice, the right and the equality of the loved one? Any empathy has to be a shared emotion. Also, autonomy is actually a myth. It is non-existent. You do not believe this. Did you make your own bread today? Did you make the shoes in which you walk to work today? Did you generate your own electricity to make your coffee or tea today? It would not be unreasonable to assume that you did not. Therefore, no one is truly autonomous. No one has full equality. No one has full control over the choices they make, even on a day-to-day -day basis. The slippery slope. Nazis. Deputy Saint-Pierre, dismissed both the relative and the slippery slope arguments in that relatives do not and should not have any say or right in a person's choice to end their own life. As with all of this, as a topic for mature discussion, it is a very, very difficult area. How many of us have wished for just one more hour to share with a loved one? Or indeed, conversely, wished a loved one would have one hour less of suffering? So yes, the writer recognises the agonies of both views in this and at every level. However, to the point above. The mother of a severely impaired disabled child wrote to Hitler asking if she might have permission to euthanize her child as, as she perceived it, the child had no and would have no quality of life. Intrigued, Herr Hitler sent his own physician to investigate. The physician did a visit with the disabled child and gave the view that the mother was indeed correct. The child had no quality of life and that this would never improve. Thus began the spark that would soon set into motion both eugenics and Hitler's master plan to weed out from society those that would be of no or little use. He employed agricultural films to use as a metaphor for the weeding out of the weakest from society. The first experiments carried out by Hitler's Nazi doctors were on disabled people. They may very well have been Jewish too, but they were first and foremost disabled people, therefore easy prey. He ordered the euthanizing of disabled people first. So this is real and tangible as a fear, rational or irrational in the 21st century. Before anyone jumps all over this point, this writer is not suggesting for a second that anyone proposing this raquette and possible law is akin to that evil regime. However, it is an interesting point that when questioned, Miss Griffiths in open public forum stated that she had indeed been seeking to include 
Alzheimer's and dementia as part of the strategy towards assisted dying, and very eloquently described how she lost both her parents, one with cancer and one with Alzheimer's stroke dementia. So in effect, Miss Griffiths accidentally makes the point for this writer. In terms of terminally ill, it is a given that it is virtually impossible to give a six months prognosis. Also, what happens then when a child is born with severe impairments? We have already very late abortions when abnormalities or congenital defects are discovered and the fetus is then destroyed. Why are we effectively forcing people to give up organs when we are actively seeking for whatever reason or reasons to end the life of some in society? Should we not be saving massive resources and people from severe pain and suffering by simply terminating the processes by which they remain alive? Kidney dialysis, pulmonary diseases, self-inflicted diseases by smoking or drug addiction, and a host of other diseases and maladies, some of which are self-inflicted. Palliative care and quality of dying. Are these complete contradictions in terms? Palliative care is a vast subject on its own, and whilst one would never wish to assume to have any great knowledge of this amazing work and care in place at the end of life, it is not unreasonable to believe that much of the end-of-life suffering is as much about the perception of the amount of pain, indignity and distress that may occur during end-of-life processes. Loss of control being one of the greatest fears. The reality is, however, that pain management in the 21st century is extremely effective. This writer again calls for a scientific study of the use of cannabinoids, Please see quality of dying in the next section. It is believed that the actual numbers of people writhing in pain at the end of life and in palliative care are very few. This, of course, is cold comfort to anyone who has watched a loved one gasping at the end for every breath. There is no denying either of the quality of care offered during the end of life in the bailiwick, and yet government makes no contribution towards this end. It is the third sector yet again which has to pick up the tab and rely on residents' generosity to be able to run places like Leiborg's Hospice. This latter point is not meant as a political jibe, but a statement of fact. Quality of dying. What a seemingly crass term to use in reference to the end of life. Yet, is it? We talk often about choice and dignity, and both of these count to the final end plan. As humans, we are always striving for the best day, the best memory, the best thing to pass on to others, the best philosophy, etc. These are part of the reason we wake up each day, wishing to move forwards. They are ingrained in us, part of the essence of what makes our psyche. Watching an acquaintance, friend or loved one writhing in agony or gasping for each breath has neither dignity nor quality of any kind. However, if we can get back to nature as opposed to big farmers grasp on everything we do, then perhaps we can find a quality in death, and perhaps in some instances find cures or much more gentle management of what are usually termed as terminal diseases, like cancer, motor neuron, multiple sclerosis and dementia. Clearly this is not an exhaustive list. Insofar as the argument for assisted dying is about the end of life, where pain management or palliative care is no longer doing its intended purpose, here is where the call for exploration in cannabinoids needs real scrutiny at the local level. Here, the bailiwick has the real possibility to lead the British Isles in terms of both possibly better treatments of a wide range of diseases and maladies and the management of the end of life process affording choice and, very importantly, dignity within it. In conclusion, whilst the writer has argued against easy words, assisted dying, there is simply no getting away from the taking of a life by another hand, however meaningful and caring that hand is. We need as a society to respect each other at a much higher level than we do currently, to have greater input and not wash our hands of our responsibilities, to make and create time for others. 
So regardless of any belief system this writer has, we have a much greater duty to ensure that life, in its entirety, is sacred, and that that sanctity is celebrated and protected. I ask you, therefore, respectfully, to reject this requette, whilst acknowledging the myriad of difficulties the subject matter holds for us all. Sincerely, Andre Rees Sheeran.